Welcome in the greatest podcast in sports betting entertainment. My name is Tanner Curran, certified G, bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. In this right here, this is G Money Grant Mitchell. Everything we worked for this season has finally come down to one game, and we're breaking it all down today from a money line spread in total perspective. And you can't teach that. Bada boom, man, the people in the room. G Money Grant Mitchell, how you doing? Tanner, couldn't be better. It's prediction Monday. We got everything in front of us. The biggest game of the year, 18 weeks of the regular season, four weeks of the postseason. This is the moment you and I have been building up to, and this is the time to go out there and prove ourselves. We're here to make some money, and hopefully by the end of the week, that's exactly what we do. Yeah, great moments are born from great opportunities, and you have one opportunity to win money on the NFL the remainder of the season, so don't let it go to waste. Last year's Super Bowl did not end well for me. I think you had the Chiefs, I imagine, or did you have the Eagles? I had the Chiefs. Yeah, I had the Eagles last year, so that one didn't really end well. And now I've learned from my mistakes, and I will be on the Chiefs, and we're going to break that down in the show. But before we get into that, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, like, share, do it all, comment. Every single thing that you need to do in the comment to take this thing to the moon, please do it, and we will get right back to you in the comment section. Grant, before we talk about this game, I do want to ask you, you told the people you're going to tell them what your tattoo was, so now you got your tattoo, so let's hear a little about the process. Yeah, so um, I mean, I guess I could show you guys. I'm not going to because it would require me getting a little, getting my shirt off. Um, but it's pretty, it's on my back, and uh, it's it's got a couple different elements to it. One of it's kind of, um, I guess, the easiest way to describe it is you've got one person over here that's just kind of looking out, and then over here you've got a reflection in a broken mirror, and in the middle there's like a path going through the woods. It's about like looking back on the journey you take through life and. You know, you get to see what you do, but no one else does. So that type of sentimental deep meaning. T Taylor, the people didn't come here for the full review, the tattoo review. You know, they came here for the picks. They did come here for the picks, but you told them you were going to give it to them. So I had to, we can't let them down. That's the Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I was in the chair. Uh, well, I wasn't in the chair the whole time, but I, I was there for 12 hours on Friday. And I was there for about eight hours on Saturday. So, um, you know, definitely going through it a little bit. It wasn't as bad as I imagined it was going to be, but not really been able to do a whole lot with my weekend. You know, it's kind of laid in bed, stomach down, and that was pretty much it, really. <laughs> hey, it is, hey, it is what it is. You get the tattoo now. That's what it's all about. You're, you're covered. You're, you're going to be a tattoo artist soon. Uh, no, I think, I think I'm done for a while. I, those are the spot. I don't, the thing is like, I don't want any neck or face tattoos. I don't want, I don't want two sleeves. I don't want leg sleeves. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty close to done. All right. Well, there you go. You know, who's going to be done next Sunday, the San Francisco 49ers when the chiefs and Taylor Swift roll their way to another Super Bowl. So bottom line is this game is going to be played next Sunday or this coming Sunday, I should say. Uh, the Chiefs are a two to a two and a half point underdog. FanDuel has them at two and a half. Most sites have two right now. But Grant, just early thoughts on the game. What do you got? Yeah, so I mean, my initial impulse was to go with the Chiefs. And I feel like that was reflected heavily by the public's betting splits. I mean, as of right now, according to um, according to odds from according to numbers from FanDuel, 70% of spread bets, 76% of the spread money is on the Chiefs. And then you go on over to VEASAN, really tells the same story. 71% of bets, 64% of the handle on the Chiefs. So public's eating up Kansas City, and you can understand why. I mean, this is the no doubt most dominant team of the last six years since Mahomes became a starter. Um, right now, Mahomes is on pace to be the greatest quarterback in the NFL history. If you want to look at this matchup and it's just simplest element, who's got the better coach? The Chiefs do. Who's got the better quarterback? Or who's got the best player? It's, it's the Chiefs. And then who's got the most dominant unit? I think it's the Chiefs defense. So I think the Chiefs win in all of those categories. And then you look at you know, the Chief, who's the better regular season team? It was San Francisco. No doubt about that. But who's been the better playoff team? It's not even been remotely close. The 49ers were outplayed by the Packers. You know, credit to them for get for I, I always got to qualify this by saying if you get those opportunities, this is what we were saying last week. If you get the opportunities to come back and you take advantage of them, then you know you deserve credit for it. So they were able to come back against the Packers. The Lions had them down 24 to 7 at halftime. Again, they do come back. But you cannot continue to put yourselves in these situations and expect to win playoff games, especially against a team as good and as experienced as the Chiefs are. So quite literally, everything is building up towards a Chiefs win here. I understand that you're holding off for the long-term perspective of, well, from September 7th, the day the season kicked off, until today, in totality, the Niners have been the better team. But... 
the way things are shaping up in the postseason, the fact that this is going to come down to crucial plays and you've got the better player, you've got the better coach and all that, I've got to go with the Chiefs. I, I understand it's a little bit of a square thing to say right now because so far the big money bets have been on the Niners, but I really don't care. I really don't. I'm done betting against Mahomes, especially as an underdog. Yeah, I think the big money bets are coming on the Niners too because like statistically, as you're saying, the San Francisco team has been one of the best in the NFL this season. But when you look at the playoffs, they did survive against the Green Bay Packers. They survived against the Detroit Lions. So there's a lot of red flags around betting San Francisco. My reasoning for taking the Chiefs in this game is very simple. I think they've played really well in the playoffs, obviously, but I'm done losing bets uh, with Patrick Mahomes not going against him in these situations where he is an underdog. The bottom line is he's the best player on the field here. You're going against San Francisco 49ers team that's very well-rounded, has a really good defense. But Brock Purdy's not going to necessarily go out and win the game for them if he has to um, in those situations. So I think Patrick Mahomes comes out, plays a very good game. The Chiefs defense has been electric. And I do think the Chiefs find a way to win this game convincingly. Now, like I said, it sounds square to say it, um, but the Chiefs are the better team coming into this one. And I don't really know why we're seeing so many big money bets come in on San Francisco as a whole. I know that statistically, as I said, they were better, but it's hard to go against Mahomes in these situations. Yeah, I agree with you there for sure. Um, and also just when I when I think about this game, right, it, you know, I'm actually going to try to tie this back into some betting trends here. So one that I found particular interest, particularly interesting was teams that outgain their opponent on the ground. So team with the mo more rushing yards are 42 and 15 straight up 40 and 14 and three against the spread in the Super Bowl. Um, obviously the Niners have one of the best ground attacks in the league. They're third in rushing yards. They got McCaffrey, who's probably going to win offensive player of the year. Um, and they, they actually outgained uh, Kansas City on the ground the last time they met in the Super Bowl. But obviously, we know the Chiefs won that game. And the Chiefs defense, Steve Spagnola has done a remarkable job forcing teams to play a game they don't want to play. If you look at the wild card round when they played the Dolphins, Tua entered with an average yards per attempt of 8.3, finished that game with 5.1. In the next round, Josh Allen and company, you know, what's the, what's the knock on Josh Allen? He's going to make mistakes, but boy, is he going to give you those highlight explosive plays. They didn't have a single pass more than 15 yards. And then last, last week, the, the Baltimore Ravens, the league's number one rushing offense, running backs got to carry the ball six times. They were terrible on the ground. So, there's no doubt in my mind, Steve Spagnuolo is going to come into this game looking to make the Niners uncomfortable. And sure, every def the defensive coordinator shares that goal, but I he's 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 been able to succeed in it. And we know what this goal is. You know, Brock Purdy, like you said earlier, you don't want him to go to toe to toe for Mahomes. Now, Purdy can shine in the play action, and when you have to commit guys down into the box and things open up on the back end. But if you stop that running game from the onset, and all of a sudden the Chiefs are up fourteen to nothing. And now you've got to open up the playbook a little bit more, open up the passing game because the Chiefs are finding success and they've got this great defense. That's when it gets a little tricky. So for me, the biggest thing to watch is this first quarter, first half rushing performance by the Niners. If the Chiefs can really slow them down, then I think it's kind of game over from the jump. Yeah, what the Chiefs did last week was unbelievable in the sense of everyone was painting the Ravens to be this unbeatable team. And everyone was painting Lamar Jackson to be this unbeatable quarterback that wasn't going to make mistakes. And the Chiefs just made him look silly. And credit to Steve Spagnuolo for doing that. It was a fantastic defensive performance by them. And it was crazy, too. Like last week, so you could say the sharp money, I guess, or the, the public, the majority of the public was on the Ravens. But there was a lot of sharp money coming in on the Ravens, too. And that line kept moving further and further away from the Chiefs, and they still overcame it. So if you are up in the air about betting this game, I think this comes down to one thing. Like even if the Chiefs come out and lose the Super Bowl, when they are an underdog, they have performed. They're 17-4-1 and one against the spread in their past 16 or in past 22 games as a dog. They've won 16 times in their past 22 games as an underdog. So if you bet the Chiefs over the next X amount of years that Patrick Mahomes is playing football as an underdog every single time, you're going to make money. Um, and I think we're going to see that again in this game. And you know what's funny, too? It's funny how narratives change because Mahomes went from we don't know if he can win on the road to, wow, he doesn't lose on the road as an underdog in the playoffs. You know, he's 2-0. and He's 11-1-1 against the spread as an underdog in his career. Uh, just some more Super Bowl betting trends here. Underdogs covered in seven of the last 10 Super Bowls, won six of them. Um, and when you've got a line here, which we can jump into in a second, but a line that's been floating around one, one and a half, two, two and a half. You're not crossing any significant numbers, so if a team covers, there's probably a good chance they're going to uh, they're going to win that. 
Um, underdogs are nine and five straight up since 2010 and 13 of the last 14 Super Bowl champions covered the spread. So if you're uh, chiefs better, again, it's probably better to, to look at them on the money line, even than against the spread. Cause you probably get some more value for it. Yeah. I wouldn't take two or two and a half. I would just take the money line. If they're within two, two and a half points. They're going to find a way to win this football game. Because again, in the Super Bowl two, you're not going to see the Dan Campbell esque kind of moves that we we know, you know, where, where games can come down to a point going for two. Like these teams are going to be very reserved. Like if there's a chance to send the game to overtime, the game will be sent to overtime kind of thing. Um, we're not going to see, I think, coaches going really far outside the box and making risky moves, especially on Kyle Shanahan's part. We don't see that at all with him. Andy Reid went for it last week on fourth down early in the game, got stuffed. So you might see a little of that. But as a whole, I, I do think this game's probably decided by three to seven points and potentially upwards of 10. Um, so I don't think the spread's really going to come into it there. So take the money line with the Chiefs if you like Kansas City. If you like the Niners, lay the two points there as well. I, I think when when looking at the spread, I it opened at two and a half. It went down. Everyone was on Kansas City. So if you were on the Niners, that was the time to get in on early. Really, right now, the value – the value has been lost on the Niners because you should have got it that that opening night. Yeah. So another thing here, since we are, I think this is a good place to talk about it because we're talking about the importance of the line. There's a chance this game comes down to a field goal. You know, I'm not going to put that out, uh, rule that out by any stretch. The 49ers have Jake Moody, rookie kicker in the right regular season. He was 84% in the playoffs so far. He's 60%. Looking at the other side, Harrison Butker, Probably the second best kicker in the league behind Justin Tucker. You got to put him in that conversation. In the regular season, 94%. In the playoffs, 100%. And we know he's been there and done that too. So if this comes down to a pressurized moment, you know, people talk about kickers aren't real football players and should kicking even be a part of football? Well, Bucker is one of the few guys that you can rely on to go out there, especially in a big moment and get the job done. So that's yet another advantage in the Chiefs' of favor. Chiefs just seem like a better team here. I know we keep we keep reiterating it in different ways, but the Chiefs overall, like go even go to the kicking game, much better team. Um, so it should be interesting there. Spread wise, we're both on the Chiefs money line, both on the Chiefs. Um, but the total is set at 47 and a half. Interesting line here. My initial gut feeling is to take the under. I probably will not have a play on the total. I just want to root for a side and I don't want to worry about points in any way. Um, last year, we saw a ton of points scored in the Super Bowl, one of the highest scoring Super Bowls ever. This year, I think it's going to be more of a defensive battle. I think we're going to see field goals kick. I think we're going to see a lot of ground and pound for both teams. Um, so that would be my reason to go under initially. But what about you? Uh, I'm exactly the same. I'm not betting the over under, but the people want the picks. So we got to talk about it. San Francisco was 11 and eight in favor of the over uh, Kansas city was six and 14 in favor of the under. That was actually the tied. No, the second lowest uh, hit rate on the over. What I'm thinking about this game, I think for me, like I said earlier, the most dominant unit is the Chiefs' defense. And I think if that's the case, you got to look at this total to go under. I, it's just – I mean, we saw what they did to Baltimore. The defense thrived. The game goes under. We saw what happened with – um with the Dolphins, the defense thrived, the game went under. Now the Bills found success running the ball, and you can argue that that's part of what Kansas City, or um, excuse me, what San Francisco wants to do to win this game. But I would counter with Kansas City probably wanted Buffalo to run the ball. I, I, they probably wanted to take away the explosive plays, especially with how good their offense was playing. They scored 27 points in 22 minutes. So I, I just think all things considered, the under's the better side. And that's actually the opposite of what the public is on. According to VEASAN, 60, no, excuse me, 31% of bets, 35% of money is on the under. So we're going against the public on this one, but maybe that's not the best place, uh, Not maybe not the worst thing in the world. Well, nobody wants to bet an under in the Super Bowl. If you're watching the Super Bowl and you're rooting for points not to be scored, like that's just that's a crazy, it's a crazy thing to do. Um, I think this game comes down to one thing, which will ultimately decide the under for both teams, and that is the red zone defense. Which team can get stops in the red zone? Which team kicks field goals? Which team scores touchdowns? The Chiefs, at least in the first half last week against the Ravens, were very efficient at doing that. Second half, they very, they slowed down. They're okay playing keep away in the second half. But the team that comes in, scores touchdowns in the red zone and forces field goals in the red zone at a higher rate, obviously got to factor in turnovers. But the team that does that is probably going to come out on top. And I think both defenses are good enough to force field goals in the red zone, leading to the under in this one. Um, I actually wanted to get your opinion on this. I know we haven't really talked about it in pre-production, but 
the Super Bowl MVP, I saw this. I mean, if you have a pick for that, you can just give it to me. But I actually wanted to ask you a question about this in particular. I believe it's from BetMGM. I saw I saw a report um, from one of those industry guys on, on Twitter that share, you know, insights from the odds makers and stuff like that. Apparently, the biggest liability to win Super Bowl MVP is Sam Darnold at plus – I think it's plus 30,000. Either 3,000 or 30,000, one of the two. And I know that's a big difference, but, um, you know, just a backup quarterback. And I don't know if they're thinking that Purdy gets injured, Darnold comes in, or Purdy struggles, they bench him, a la Jalen Hurts and Tua Tagovailoa. You make the switch at halftime, and the other guy comes in and leads. I think that's pretty interesting. I mean, for a little $5 bet, I, I think it would almost be worth it because – in this, in the event Darnold has to play in any capacity and the 49ers win, there's probably a decent chance he ends up getting the award. No, yeah, I think it's a. It, I wouldn't do it. I feel like you're kind of lighting money on fire, but it is a. It's a sharp play in the sense of okay, so Brock Purdy gets hurt. Sam Darnold realistically to be the Super Bowl MVP as long as Christian McCaffrey doesn't go off. Like even if Brock or Sam Darnold came in in the fourth quarter and played a great fourth quarter and then like led a game winning drive or a go ahead touchdown drive that puts him ahead of Christian McCaffrey just because of the quarterback bias, unless McCaffrey goes for, you know, 200 yards combined and has a couple scores. But I think it's a good play in that sense. I also think Christian or um, Sam Darnold is good enough to throw the football around the field. Like he's a very talented pocket passer. I know it hasn't shown much in the NFL, but the situation that he came into wasn't ideal and it just really didn't work out for him. But he can still throw the ball. It's a better bet than taking Blaine Gabbert on the other side because if Mahomes goes down, I think there's a better chance that Pacheco would end up MVP. But if Mahomes goes down in general, the Chiefs aren't winning the football game. Yeah, I agree with that. Do you have any actual just regular picks for that for that market? Uh, see, I, I think you're kind of it's if I like the Chiefs, I think you have to take Patrick Mahomes at plus 135. I'd rather be safer and take the Chiefs on the money line at plus 110. Brock Purdy versus CMC. Like, if I like the Niners, I would probably take CMC over Brock Purdy. I know there's a ton of quarterback bias, but Brock or for CMC for plus 450 is, you know, insane value. At the same time, too, like you said, Steve Spagnola, what's he going to try to eliminate? One thing, the run game. And then that's going to put everything on Brock Purdy. So if the Niners do come out, there's a realistic chance that Brock Purdy is the one that wins the game for him. So I would just stay away from it personally. I, I'm good with the sides and, you know, having a couple props in the game. What I like you? your analysis on that. I, I have nothing to add. Um, I actually I actually do have a pick for an underdog. And I, I haven't, if you'll excuse me, I, I need to see what his updated odds are because I haven't, I haven't, um, I haven't checked in a few days. But this is a guy that I really liked. Okay, I, Thing, I think I got him here. So a potential dark horse. If you're looking, if you got five dollars sitting in the account, you you want to throw him on something, Super Bowl MVP. George Karloftis at plus ten thousand. Allow me to make the case. If you look at Nick Bosa, Chris Jones, Karloftis, all of them had ten and a half sacks in the regular season. So neither none of them stood out above the other. Karloftis, I think, arguably was maybe the most impressive. And in the postseason, he has the most sacks of them all. Now, Bosa did play one, one less game, um, but he actually didn't get a sack against the Packers. He gets two against the Lions. Karloftis is two and a half in the postseason. That's the most of any player on either team. And if you're going into this game, the 49ers offense of, offensive line was ranked 21st by pro football focus. You know Chris Jones is going to command a bunch of attention because even with the statistics the way they are, you need to stop Chris Jones. That's the primary focus. So you're going to get Karloftis going against the bottom 10 offensive line one-on-one -on -one most of the afternoon. And if you know this game unfolds the way we're kind of thinking where there's pressure on the Niners and they got to throw the ball a little more, that's more opportunities for sacks. And he had a strip sack, a strip fumble last week. There's a chance, you know, if the, if the Chiefs often struggles, they win like 13 to 10 or something like that. And it comes down to a big turnover. Carl Loftus for plus 10,000. That would be where I'd go with my uh, that little five dollars sitting left over. So the last defensive player to ever win it was um, Von Miller. Von Miller, 2014, right? Yeah, just my one fear here. Like you go back to like Patriots, um, Seahawks. And in the end of the day, like who was the MVP in that game? It, like Tom Brady won it, but the MVP Malcolm was Butler. Malcolm Butler. So like, I just I it, it's probably better than putting a plus five thousand parlay together. It's probably a better if you're gonna burn 10 bucks, probably a better way to do it. I like the analysis. It's just the quarterback bias is so unreal right now. Like it's gonna be a quarterback. My yeah, God. it's it's gonna have to it's gonna have to be one of those one in a million games for it to happen that way. But I like it better than 
you know, like who are some of the other guys around? I like it better than Rasheed Rice to win MVP. I like it better than George Kittle to win MVP. So, something like that, you know. Like realistically, it's gonna be it, in this order, in my opinion, it's gonna be Purdy, McCaffrey, or excuse me, Mahomes, Purdy, McCaffrey, uh, maybe Kelsey and Pacheco, Debo, and after that, it's it's just a shit show. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just can't see if. It's going to be Mahomes. Mahomes or Purdy, probably, I would say. Christian McCaffrey, close second to Purdy if they win. I think Kelsey could get it. But, like, if Kelsey has a big day or Rasheed Rice has a big day, it's going to go to Mahomes. Like, Pacheco is probably a decent bet at 35-1 to one, um, because he can stand out, score two touchdowns, have 100 yards. Mahomes can throw for 250 with a couple touchdowns. Yeah, I think you could still make the case for Pacheco. Yeah, Pacheco's Pacheco's another sneaky one. He's another one that has good value up there. And he scored in seven straight games, too. And the yeah. Chiefs probably want to run the ball, keep the Niners off the field. So he would also be someone looking uh, worth looking at a little bit, too. His numbers, though, scare me a little bit. Like, he's had the big, like, break-your-back carry. Like, he's had that 20, 30-yard carry, but he hasn't been consistent. Like, it's been two, three yards a pop. He'll rip off the big one, and it'll, be, it'll come in a big moment. Um, but he's... He's not, I don't see him going over 100 yards in this football game. It's just not what he's done this season. So a little weary there. I think it comes down to the quarterbacks. And again, that's just that's just what the, the NFL has come to for every single MVP award. Yeah, agreed. Sorry to all the 49ers fans out there. I know the whole of America seems to be betting against you, um, and Tanner and I are as well. But I got to say, I'm a little sick of the Niners fans online. Have you seen those tweets where – is underdog for the third straight week. You know, it's it's us for seven. The Niners have been favored in every single game they played this year. You are not the underdogs. I'm sorry. You're favored against Patrick Mahomes. You're not an underdog at all. Like, stop. Yeah. The, the, the social team tweeted that, like, against all odds. It was like a highlight video. Someone I saw on BR betting, someone quote tweeted it. it was like, bro, you've been like favored in every single game this season. Yeah, it wasn't against all odds. It's it's with all odds. Every every game you have been expected to win. I, I'm sick of it. <laughs> they should win. Like, that's what it comes down to. You're, they're the better team statistically. They, they're they a favorite. Like, favorites should win, right? That's how it should work. But yeah. I don't think it's going to. Hopefully it does it because I got to get some money back from last year's Super Bowl that Patrick Mahomes ripped out of my hands. Well, hopefully we can do that with these picks we shared with you all today. And then we're going to be back on Wednesday to talk about some props. And Friday, we've got something special planned. It's going to be a little bit more of a lighthearted show. We're going to dive into the the uh, exotic markets. We're going to talk about the props like the coin toss and the national anthem and which songs coming on at the Super Bowl halftime and the color of the Gatorade and all that stuff. Just keep it a little lighthearted. But Wednesday, that's the main prop show. We are going to be back for that. But we hope you all enjoyed this episode of Ride the Line. Tanner, you can go ahead and take us on out of here. That was Ride the Line, the greatest podcast in sports betting entertainment. We'll see you on Wednesday for another episode.